and welcome back. This is Baller Scuba with more bonus episodes of Let's Play Final Fantasy X. I'm joined, as always, by my no one left to conquer squad of Wakalulu, Riku, Titus, Yuna, Orin, and Kamari. When we last left off, there was a big bad boss fight. We took on the biggest thing in the game and we defeated it. That was Penance. As a result, there's nothing really for me to defeat anymore. However, there are still a few things that I wanted to show off. Uh, the first thing that I wanted to show off today would be the different overdrive modes. This is something that I briefly talked about uh, during the game. I kind of talked about some of the more uh, important ones, but thanks to a save game editor, I was able to get all of the overdrive modes for all of my characters. If I did it uh, uh, the normal way, it could easily take hundreds of turns. And in some cases does take hundreds of turns in order to get. Uh, I will talk a little bit about these. Uh, remember, this is how your overdrive gauge charges. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about it. Um, and that's pretty much gonna be this video. So uh, we will start with Stoic. So Stoic is the basic one. This is what you start with on all of your characters when you start the game. And it charges up, uh, the formula is damage times 30 divided by the character's max HP. It is something that changes depending on how much damage is done to you which does make sense that's the standard one uh this has been around since final fantasy 7. uh this is the default when i think of how to charge some kind of overdrive or limit gauge i think of stoic and once again everybody comes equipped with that uh the next one on our list here is warrior warrior increases the gauge when you do damage to an enemy and depending on, it depends on how much damage you do. And it will charge your uh, gauge by anywhere between 1 and 16% per hit. Now, in order to get this, you have to hit enemies. And it's not based on damage. It is how often you do it. Uh, the person that gets it the quickest is actually Orin. Uh, it takes 100 turns hitting the enemy before he learns Warrior. It depends on which character you're trying to get it for, how quickly you can get it. And it's actually Lulu that takes the longest to get it. Hers is 300 attacks. This is why I'm just showing it off this way. So anywhere between 100 and 300 attacks in order to unlock Warrior. Pretty basic, we have seen it and a lot of characters got it naturally as I played. So we did it that way. Uh, the next one is Comrade. Comrade is one of my favorite ones, especially towards the end of the game when the enemies are doing a massive amount of damage to the party. It, it increases the gauge every time an ally takes damage. And the formula for this one is damage times 20 divided by the ally's max HP. So it doesn't do as much as Stoic, but you don't have to get hit and there's a better chance of your enemy or sorry your allies getting hit than you are getting hit plus if it hits everybody then that of course doubles so comrade is my favorite way of normally over or filling up the overdrive gauge that's my personal favorite way at the end of the game it's pretty easy to learn as well uh basically 100 to 300 turns uh, Kamari learns it the fastest at 100 turns. Titus learns it the slowest at 300 turns. But then again, he's always in your party when you start, so he might get that first anyway. Comrade, big fan of it because when it hits everybody, it charges up that overdrive gauge very, very quickly. Next one is Healer. This is something that Yuna got naturally for me, and I think that was it. Maybe uh, Riku got it as well, because I was using her a lot for uh, Auto Phoenix and stuff like that. But this charges the overdrive gauge every time you heal somebody in your party. And once again, this is a variable one. It's the amount healed times 16 divided by the target max HP. This one's kind of a slow one, 
uh, to charge up because that number was only times by 16 as opposed to stoic which was times 30 and comrade which is times 20 uh, but for yuna it was the easiest to learn in terms of how quickly it takes to learn it yuna learns it the most quickly which is only 60 turns healing uh, that's really low there's a few of these that are really low but only 60 turns healing to get that one. Orin learns it the slowest at 200 turns of healing. Uh, not my favorite, but useful for my white mage character when all she could really do was white mage and sometimes uh, summon. But I usually used her just for healing. Next one is Tactician. This is one that I think I did learn on Waka uh, during the normal run through. This charges every time you use a status attack and it succeeds. We're starting to get into some of the ones that I'm not a fan of because they don't happen all that often. So every time you inflict a status ailment on the enemy, it charges your overdrive gauge by 16%. But how often am I really doing that? You know what I mean? And I can't change overdrive mode in battle. At least I didn't think I could. No, I'm pretty sure you can't. So it's just not something that I particularly care too much about. In terms of learning it, Orin learns it the quickest at 80 turns. Waka's not too far behind at 90, uh, but it is actually Riku that learns it the slowest. 200 turns of inflicting status ailments before you can get this and then never use it. Uh, next up is Victim. Victim works very similarly to Tactician in that it is uh, based on status attacks, except victim, you get hit with a status effect, status attack. So every time you're inflicted with a status ailment, you get a chance, well, you fill up your overdrive gauge, once again by 16%. This is one of my least favorite ones, because that means I can't have ribbon, I have to actually... Uh, be susceptible to the attacks, and then what? What am I going to do? I'm going to let my character get a lot of status, status ailments afflicted on them so I can charge up the overdrive gauge? It just doesn't make all that much sense to me, but it is here. Uh, in order to learn Victim, Yuna learns it the quickest at 80 turns of status effects. Um, but once again, it only counts every time you get it inflicted on you. It doesn't count when you just have it on you. But 80 turns for Yuna. Looks like Kamari is the slowest at 130 st status ailment attacks on him. Once again, not my favorite. Uh, next up, we have Dancer. Uh, this is kind of cool, I, I, I have to say. The gauge increases every time you evade an attack. But once again, only 16%. There are better ways to get that, but um, that can happen a lot if we're up against some weaker enemies, dancing around them and just defending uh, will do the trick and that'll raise your overdrive gauge pretty quickly, but it is relying on some randomness. Uh, but of course, my characters now pretty much evade everything thanks to all my luck and all my evasion. Uh, but there it is, Dancer. Dancer is actually really difficult to learn. Uh, Kamari learns it the fastest at 130 turns. Lulu actually learns it the slowest because she dodges the most. It takes 300 dodges for her to learn Dancer. And most people are around the 200 to... Actually, everybody else is either 200 or 250. That's a lot of dodging if you want to learn Dancer. Useful, but it requires so much effort to get in that I would not necessarily count on it. Uh, next up, we do have Avenger. Avenger, uh, your gauge increases when an ally is knocked out. I think I actually got this one naturally, but... I don't want to rely on my characters getting knocked out. I'd rather rely on them getting hit. That's better for me, but Avenger will increase it by 30%, your overdrive gauge, every time your ally is knocked out. So that is significant. 30% is amongst the highest, if not the highest, uh, in the game. 30%. If you've got triple overdrive on you and your party member gets knocked out, that's pretty much a full overdrive, but 
once again, it relies on people getting knocked out. In terms of how many times it takes, it's way too many times. Uh, Yuna learns it the fastest uh, when 80 party members get knocked out, and Lulu learns it the slowest at 150 characters getting knocked out. But remember, they have to be in the active party for all of this, so it does take a lot of time to learn, because how often am I really getting knocked out in this game? Towards the end, it happened a lot, but really uh, not something that I want to kind of rely on. Once again, I'd rather live and just take damage and learn that way. The next one was a very useful one for me. It is Slayer. Slayer is awesome. Take that however you will. Uh, every time you defeat an enemy, it rages, raises your overdrive gauge by 20%. Considering how easy it is for me to actually slay enemies now, this works really quickly. So when I'm not in a boss fight and I'm just trying to get the overdrive gauge up, Slayer is the one that I turn on because I really only need usually only two enemies defeated because of the triple overdrive in order to max out my overdrive gauge. It works very quickly and I'm killing people in one hit, so I might as well take advantage of it. It is something that is relatively difficult to learn. Uh, Orin learns it the quickest at 80 enemies killed. Riku learns it the slowest at 200 enemies killed, which is kind of weird considering how... I don't really use her for that, so I guess it makes sense because I'm not using her for that, but it takes so many kills on her end in order to get Slayer, which is what I want for her overdrive gauge. Uh, next one is Hero. Hero increases your overdrive gauge whenever you defeat an enemy with high HP. I don't know what high HP means in terms of an actual number, uh, but I was starting, but I learned it naturally with Waka uh, during the Omega dungeon, so those guys definitely count. I don't know what the exact number is, but I would assume Inside Sin counts, all of the uh, monsters in the Monster Arena count. Um, so I would assume somewhere around 10,000 HP, somewhere around there would probably count towards Hero. Um, but when you actually defeat these enemies, you get 20% of your overdrive gauge full, which is the same as Hero, or sorry, the Hero is the same as Slayer, so I would go with Slayer because it counts for everything, whereas Hero just applies to powerful monsters. So kind of the same thing, except Hero is worse because of the limitations on it. Hero is actually one of the easier ones to learn in terms of actual turns, but considering that it doesn't activate until much later in the game, although it's easy to learn, you can't get it early. But Orin actually gets it the fastest. He has to kill 40 powerful monsters. And Lulu gets it, gets it the slowest. She has to kill 70 powerful monsters. So, once again, if you don't have it, it's not too difficult to get compared to some of the other overdrives. But it's not as useful as the default one. Rook is up next. Rook, I... Yeah, this one's kind of weird. Um, it charges when a character magically blo blocks an attack. And... What they mean by that is protect, shell, or one of the null spells. Something like that. I don't know why you would go this route. It seems like something that doesn't happen too often, but if you just want to put protect on all of your characters and then defend, you can learn it this way. However, it also doesn't charge your overdrive gauge by very much. Every time you're hit and you reduce or nullify the spell or the attack, it charges your overdrive gauge by 10%. So it's hard to get, and it's not all that useful once you get it. So I'm not a fan of Rook. Uh, but pretty much everybody learns it at the same speed, except for Yuna. Yuna learns it the quickest when she blocks 110 attacks. Everybody else learns it when they block 120 attacks, so it doesn't take too long to get it, but you have to know it's there and want to get it, and then once you get it, I would not recommend using it, so not my favorite. Uh, Victor is actually something that I use from time to time, um, 
basically you win a battle. Whenever you win a battle, your uh, your overdrive gauge increases by 20%. Once again, they have to be in the fight. They have to be part of your active party when the battle is won in order for this to charge. But it does go up by 20%, which is one of the higher numbers. So I am a fan of it. Had to use it every once in a while when I didn't have Slayer or Warrior on a on one of my party members. It was pretty easy to get Victor. And I think Riku was the one that had it, but not uh, Slayer or Warrior. So I used it on her. It actually is pretty easy to get. Um, you have to win 120 battles uh, for Kamari and Titus to learn it. So Titus learns it very quickly, considering how many fights he's in that you're winning. Orin and Lulu learn it the slowest. They have to be in 200 fights where you win. But considering for a good portion, they are your biggest damage dealers, that kind of makes sense. But it is a lot of fights. That's 200 fights that you have to win with these people in your party in order to learn Victor. But there you go. Victor, it's useful. There's just more useful out there. Next up is Coward. It charges whenever your characters flee from a battle. And when you do that, it increases your, your overdrive gauge by 10%. Once again, not my favorite. Uh, I actually did not learn this, even though I'll freely admit I fled from quite a few battles when I'm just like, I don't want to deal with this right now um, because it was going to take too long and I just wanted to get to the other side. Uh, but in order to charge this one, um, many characters, Lulu, Kamari, Riku, and Waka, they all learn it fairly quickly at fleeing 100 battles. Tidus learns it the slowest, probably because he has flee from the get-go, uh, or at least very early on. He has to flee from 300 fights in order to learn Coward. So there you go. It is available. Not my favorite. Uh, next up, we have Ally. Ally is kind of interesting. Basically, all you have to do is get a turn, and it charges your overdrive gauge by 4% each time. So if you want to put haste on your party and just charge, 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 25 defends, and suddenly your overdrive gauge is full. Um, of course, that can be reduced with, like, triple overdrive, where it would be, what, nine? Nine turns. So... That's Ally. As you might anticipate, Ally is the one that has the highest numbers, but considering it's every time it's your turn, that kind of makes sense. So the quickest one to learn it is Kamari. He needs to have 300 turns for it. Slowest one, as you might suspect, is Tidus, because he's with you from the beginning. 600 turns, and then he will learn Ally. It doesn't quite make sense, because Ally kind of implies somebody else's turn, but it is your turn. So there you go. That's ally. Next up is sufferer. Uh, this is similar to victim. Remember victim was when somebody inflicted you with a status of ailment. Sufferer is while you have it. So as long as your character has a status ailment on them, they'll charge their overdrive gauge. How much does it charge? 16%. I mean, that's a high number. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but is that really how you want to charge your overdrive gauge? Is just sit there and be poisoned or slowed or whatever? I don't know. It just doesn't seem like the best way to do it. Uh, it's actually kind of difficult to learn. I would say the easiest, uh, well, the person that learns it the fastest, uh, is a tie between Kamari and Yuna at 100 turns. And then uh, Orin learns it the slowest at 160 turns. I would say that's a lot of turns being afflicted with a status ailment. Uh, but I guess you could easily farm that if you wanted. But why would you want to? It does not uh, fill up the overdrive gauge nearly as quickly as other things. Granted, it's faster than ally, but uh, that's not enough for me. Uh, next up is Daredevil. Daredevil increases your overdrive gauge by 16%. Every turn your character is in critical HP, in the yellow. So it can be nice. Uh, you can do a full Final Fantasy VIII run where you just have one character constantly in critical HP, and they will over 
fill up their overdrive gauge very quickly, uh, but that's not typically the way that I play this game. It does actually take quite a few turns in order to learn Daredevil. Yuna actually learns it quickly, though. Uh, 90 turns in critical condition, and Yuna will learn Daredevil. Orin learns it the slowest, 260 turns in critical HP. Remember, he's your tank. He shouldn't be there too much, but in case he is, he will learn Daredevil. And then finally, we have Loner. This charges every time your character is the only one in the fight. So that one story battle with Kamari, or if both other characters are knocked out, or they've been ejected from the fight, should you, got, should you have been thrush kicked or something, something like that. But once again, every turn, 16%, it'll charge your overdrive gauge. So not my favorite, but it is there for you. I always have trouble learning this one. How often am I really having characters by themselves? Um, and once again, lots of turns in order for everybody to learn it. Uh, Orin learns it very quickly, though. Only 35 turns when he's alone, and he'll learn Loner. So that goes quickly, but Yuna learns it the slowest. 180 turns when she's all by herself, and she will learn Loner. That's a lot of turns. That's, that's a lot. So... Those are the overdrive modes. I pretty much went over the ones that are useful. The ones that are useful are the ones that you kind of get naturally throughout the game. Uh, Stoic is actually pretty useful. Uh, Comrade, I would say, is my favorite, personally. Uh, Warrior, Healer, and Slayer are also useful in certain situations as well. Warrior uh, doesn't charge as much as you would like a lot of the time. So I don't end up using it in big boss fights. I prefer Comrade. Uh, but if you're looking to charge off screen, Warrior and Slayer work out really well. Victor also works for that. But everything else, I would kind of avoid. Those were the only ones that I was really using. There are a lot of these. And it's kind of sad to say that most of them are not really all that useful compared to others. Uh, but if you want to have kind of an exotic overdrive party, that kind of works. But since there's no multiplayer in this game, I don't really see the purpose of that. Uh, I could see it being used in a multiplayer match where you don't know what charges your opponent's overdrive gauge. But unless it charges it up to full in one turn, I can't see that really playing into, uh, well, you taking that into account. Like, let's say they have Dancer on, and every time they evade, it charges their overdrive gauge. Once you see that overdrive gauge charge because they evaded, you know what's going on. But I don't know, just spitballing here. Ultimately, most of these are not all that great. But those are the overdrive modes. I did want to talk about that. We still have a few things to go over. I did want to go over all of the abilities, uh, all of the specials, all of the skills, all of the white magic and black magic, and of course the overdrives, summons, and their overdrives. I might go ahead and just kind of cheat with the Aeons. I haven't cheated with them yet. But as you can see, a lot of them do have max stats kind of naturally uh, because of what we did with Yuna. They're basically based on Yuna's stuff. Uh, but their overdrives are, if memory serves me correctly, based on Titus's. It's something weird like that. There's a weird aspect to them. Uh, I can't give a lot of these characters uh, abilities. I will show off Cindy, Sandy, Mindy, and Yojimbo uh, because they work differently. Uh, so that is a plan. I do want them to learn everything possible. So I'll possibly go through that. I don't know. I have to think about that. Uh, then, of course, I do want to max out their stats if possible. Just so you guys can see what theirs are like. But as you can see, I already took out the biggest, baddest enemy in the game. There's really no purpose for me actually grinding them other than to show it off so that is coming up but before we go into that i said that i wanted to talk to everybody in the world again uh because they should have something new to say 
So I'm gonna go ahead and take care of that. That's probably gonna take a few videos. So just a warning if you don't want to see that, we will be talking to everybody and seeing what they have to say. So I'm gonna start taking care of that after I take a quick break. <laughs> 